Don't worry, everyone. Everything shall be okay, for I, the overpowered and emotionless main character, shall protect you. Bang. Critter Guy here with the late anime review. I apologize for that, but once you hear what I have to say, you'll understand why it's late. And that's on the anime The Irregular at Magic High School. Let's begin. So The Irregular at Magic High School follows siblings Tatsuya and Miyuki Shiba who attend this magic high school and all the intense situations they get into while attending this school. That's it. Now this anime right here had the second highest vote count in my anime poll for possible anime reviews for July. And after watching said anime, all I have to say is... I don't understand how this anime in particular got that many votes! Like, I don't understand its appeal. It's not because I had a huge problem with the incestuous vibe throughout the entire anime, which I did and I will get to later on. It's because this anime is one of the most by-the-numbers generic animes I've seen all year, lacking any sort of intrigue or investment. But that's not to say this anime has nothing to offer, as it does have some fantastic animation done by Madhouse, a great animation studio, and some really fun and cool looking action sequences that I enjoyed up to a certain point. There were a few characters in the anime, though lacking in development, that I did enjoy seeing, like Chiba, who's basically like the Tsundere character of the anime. She was just a hoot to watch, and I loved her interactions with all the characters in the anime, but my personal favorite was this girl, Honoka. I don't really know how to explain it, but I just found her so charming and sweet, and her playful banter with Tatsuya I, I really enjoyed, and I really wanted them to end up being a couple by the end, but of course, that wasn't gonna happen. And this anime did one particular thing so right that it made me extremely happy that this anime addressed and fixed this glaring issue I've had in animes before and after it. And you might find this to be very insignificant and pointless to the main story, but for me, I've been complaining about this one solitary element for years. And the fact that they addressed it here in the anime and rectified that mistake it, it got itself an extra point in my book. And that's the fact that all the girls in this anime don't automatically fall in love with the main character and actually go out of their way to date other male characters in the anime. That just blew me away, as I've always seen animes where, you know, it's like a really stoic main character guy who's like a freaking badass. All the girls just kind of levitate to him and just ignore every other guys. But in this anime, yes, he's a badass and they all respect that, but they have feelings for other characters. And I was so happy that they addressed this. Only like about maybe three or four girls in the anime are hinted to like the main character, including his sister. But all the other girls, they're dating other people, or they're interested in other people. I was so happy to see that. Good job, anime. You made me proud. But where this anime takes one step forward, it takes three steps back, as there are so many glaring issues with this anime. And I bet you're all expecting a big, long, and angry rant about the incestuous relationship between Tatsuya and his sister Miyuki, and that being the biggest issue that I have with this anime, right? Wrong! Because that incestuous relationship is the least of this anime's problem, as shocking as that may be. The real big issue about this anime is what I mentioned earlier, about this anime being such a run-of-the-mill, by-the-numbers, generic 
action anime with no flair, no intrigue, and worst of all, no investment. I was sitting here watching this anime, listening to the in-depth discussions among the characters about the certain threats they have to deal with and how magic works in this world. I was watching the cool looking action scenes unfolding in front of my eyes and the badassery of our main character, Toxia, and all I could really think about was how unengaged I was with everything that was happening on screen. I could literally give two shits. In fact, no lie, while I was watching this anime, you know what I did? I was reading my YouTube comments. I was like, you know what? I could just kill two birds with one stone. It's not like anything really engaging is happening on screen. So you know what? I'm gonna pop up another tab. I'm gonna look through all of my top 10 TV shows that overstate their welcome comments and reply to each and every one of them because honestly, why do I even give a fuck about what's gonna happen to Tatsuya when he's so freaking overpowered? And I literally mean that. Every single action scene in this anime was lacking one very crucial thing that an action scene must have, and that is tension. The tension will build engagement and investment in our characters and hoping that they make it out of the situation. But the thing is, there is no tension because the main character is so fucking overpowered. In fact, he's so powerful, he acts as a deus ex machina and can fucking heal people right there on the spot. So where's the tension? If everyone's gonna survive anyway, why should I give a fuck? It doesn't matter how cool your action scene looks. It doesn't matter how badass you make your character. If we don't give a shit and aren't attached to the situation, we're not going to care. Not to mention that there's absolutely no character growth in this entire anime. Our characters don't change or grow better or become more interesting. They all stay the same, which is a big problem because growth in characters is one of the main staples of telling an interesting story. And it doesn't have to be the main character all the time. The side characters or supporting characters can grow along with the main character who stays the same. But the fact is, no no characters grow in this anime. No characters go through some real evolution. Every character stays the same. Another major issue with this anime is that they present so many different story elements in this anime, but leave most of them up in the air and unresolved. Hell, there are even some character relationships that they don't fully explore or expand upon. Like that one character that I mentioned earlier, Chiba, she has a brother that is dating one of the characters that are part of her high school, and they don't really explore why she has such a big issue with her brother dating this girl. Hell, they don't don't even expand on the relationship between Honoka and Tatsuya. And yes, I know they do explain in the anime that Tatsuya is supposed to be like this emotionless badass and all of his emotions were taken away except for his emotion for his sister, but they don't even explain why they took away his emotions. There's a backstory here that isn't explored at all. And speaking of which, there are many backstories in this anime that are presented, but never explored or expanded upon for us to get a deeper understanding understanding of not only our characters, but the situations that led them to the point they are now. I've already mentioned two of them, but there are other ones as well. Like later on in the anime, we find out that Tatsuya and Miyuki are actually a part of a big clan in Japan called the Yatsuba clan, who kinda are a part of the Big Ten clans here in Japan. They never explore who the Big Ten clans are or what they do for Japan or what they attribute to this world that's never really explored. We find out later that Tatsuya is actually a special officer, a part of the army, but how did that happen and where is his mother? And the last issue I have with this anime and the one you all have been waiting for, yes. I did have a major problem with the incestuous relationship between Tatsuya and Miyuki. And what hurt me the most is that they actually had a dynamic relationship. If they didn't just add in those stares and that music and the way that the sister would talk to the brother and how they would hold each other, I'm like, God damn it, really? You could have made a really strong and dynamic sibling relationship, one that could rival other animes, but instead, 
you cop out and make it a romantic one? Like, we don't have enough girls in this anime already. Why does he need to build one with his sister? Now, as I mentioned earlier, they got rid of all of his emotions except for his love for his sister, and he'll do whatever it takes to protect her, and that's fine. That works. But you don't have to make it a romantic one. You can just make it a really profound and loving, like, brotherly love kind of thing. Why does it have to be romantic? It just feels very tacked on and forced. <sighs> I can't believe I ranted about this anime. Because in all honesty, this anime is not worth the time, effort, or even energy that it takes to make a rad video. The anime is so uninspired, so uninteresting, so unengaging. Every unword you could think of under the sun when referring to this anime. From its characters, to its story, to its action scenes, the animation and action cannot save this anime whatsoever. And I, in good conscience, cannot recommend people to go check this anime out. Because it is without a doubt a one out of five stars, guys. It's an unnecessary waste of time. You can see far more better animes out there instead of this run-of-the-mill, generic, by-the-numbers, boring action anime. I'm done ranting for today. Anyway, what did you guys think of this anime? Did anybody out there really love it? Did anybody really enjoy it? Or you like me and found it to be an unnecessary waste of time and just overall unengaging and you'd rather go read the light novel instead of watching the crappy anime? And let me know, who is the most overpowered anime character in your opinion? Comment below, let me know. Stay tuned, I'm going to be watching Ant-Man tonight and hopefully we'll have a review out by tomorrow and I'm going to get started on my next anime. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more entertaining than the one that I just reviewed right now. And stay tuned next Wednesday for another top 10 list. And until then guys, if you'd like to be a part of the Black Critic Crew and not miss out on a single awesome video on this channel, please hit that subscribe button below. Like this video if you really enjoyed it, and I'm Tony Wildley the second, the lover of incest and in anime, as the black critic guy. Till then, peace YouTube!